stacks. So today we're going to talk about Borla 8 stack or Borla EFI. And uh, this video is, it will cover more or less every 8 stack system that's available out there. So basically, if you're purchasing an engine from us, it kind of all starts here in the dyno room. So what I mean by that is we obviously build the engine, come to the engine dyno room, we preset these throttles and we make our runs. And I'll explain kind of the step-by-step -step process we go through uh, for that part of it. Now, if you're purchasing an engine from us and it comes off of the dyno here in the controlled environment and then you put it in the car, we still want to pay attention to the exact same thing and setups we do in here when it goes in the vehicle. And you may ask yourself why. Well, the reason being is that you're gonna have your headers for your vehicle, your exhaust, underhood temperatures are gonna change the idle. So basically if we're changing the idle screw settings, then we're gonna have to pay attention to resyncing these throttles. Um, we do a lot of this stuff also for gentlemen that have purchased maybe a Ford racing crate engine or somebody else's and later on add a Borla, then we offer assistance for those people uh, to also walk you through. So the idea of the video is to, to give you some little tips and tricks of how to make it easier on yourself when you're doing these installations. So we'll start with the initial throttle plate adjustment. I want to point out these are very, very good from Borla one of the reasons why we use these because the throttle bores are very very straight and concentric so adjusting these uh, it's not as difficult as some people think so one of the things that we start with is a simple feeler gauge so we've got quite a few of these that we've already cut and trimmed down these are going to serve two purposes so one of the things that we first start with is you have a screw here on each side that's going to control all four throttle bodies. Okay, we take a three thousandths feeler gauge and we put it between the throttle lever and the screw. And that basically what we're doing is getting a base setting of closed, we'll call it. And we're calling it closed, but it's three thousandths. So we can get them both side to side pretty close. And then from there, we go uh, with our simple Allen key we're going to turn one complete turn on both sides. Now, that base setting is going to vary depending on the engine. The bigger, obviously, the cubic inch, if we're doing a 582 big block Chevy, it's going to need a little bit more throttle blades. We may go one and a quarter or one and a half turns. But that's going to get our baseline setting. So that said, when we first start the engine in here, just like it would be you starting it in the vehicle, you don't want to be monkeying around and messing with the, the adjustment of these throttle blades. We're warming up, we want to check, make sure our oil pressure is good, we want to top off the radiator. Uh, so there's a lot of other things that we're paying attention to. So we want to get these as close as we can when we do our initial startup and then we'll come back. So we'll come back with the air meter. So what they provide you is this air meter to calibrate each individual throttle. So real simply after it fires up, we'll quickly check it and just make sure that they're, they're semi-close, maybe make a quick adjustment to get it within a few numbers on this gauge. That way we can pay attention to everything else that matters, our coolant temp, our oil pressure, and so on. Now, we won't get back to this air meter in the dyno room until we've made some runs on it. The reason why is as the motor warms up, everything's expanding, everything's moving, everything's changing. So what we'll do is basically let it run in, or some call it break in time. We'll let it run in, and then we'll make our throttle uh, hits, you know, and start to make pulls. So after that's done, we've basically got the engine now heat soaked, uh, it's settled, and we've made throttle runs. Then when we return back to idle, then we're going to grab that air meter again, and we're going to pay very close attention to the calibration. Um, and we're wanting to make sure that it's the same on each side as well as from throttle body to throttle body. So one of the things about Borla as well as a few others out there, underneath this is a common plenum. That basically gives you a vacuum area to pull for the map sensor. But what it also does is actually help balance these from side to side so it doesn't make it as tricky. So 
Now, the throttle screw has a spring on it, obviously, to keep tension. Now, let's just keep in mind we have eight individual throttle bodies for this engine. This, that's a, an immense amount of air for an engine this size. So, there's not a lot of turns, as I mentioned before. We're only about one turn on this. So, one of the tricks that I should have started this video with is take the throttle screw out, stretch the spring. We want to stretch it past the threads. That way, when we put it back in there, it's got some additional tension on it. Uh, part of the reason for that is, is if this only has, say, a, a half to a three-quarter turn, these engines make decent power. They do vibrate a bit at idle, you know, or they're, they're grumbly. So eventually, that could loosen up. And so when people talk about having to readjust and constantly chase these things, those are the things that really that's what they're talking about, whether they know it or not. Um, you can pretty much take this to the bank if it's set up correctly and you do the little tips and tricks, you can pretty much set it and forget it. So stretch that spring, get some tension on it, so that way we can make our throttle adjustments get these things synced in. So we'll move on to the next part of what the feeler blade uh, is useful for. So each one of these throttle bodies is tied together with a coupler. I'm not really sure the correct name for the coupler, uh, but that coupler is what's going to adjust difference in airflow from this throttle body to this throttle body. So generally, if we've checked all of these and they're pretty close, what we're going to do is we're going to take the highest reading and we're going to kind of concentrate on that. So let's just say that four out of eight of them are reading 10 on our meter and the others are maybe six, for instance. And we're just, just throwing some numbers out there. This feeler blade comes in very, it comes very handy because now what we can do is we can crack the throttle blade open and say we'll take a eight thousandths feeler blade, for instance. We'll slide it down in there, let the throttle close, and we'll loosen the screw and then we'll just tighten it back down. And what that's going to do is allow that blade setting to now be opened up. And the, the throttle blade can actually set against this. So you're not trying to hold it manually or anything of that nature and lock it down. You can use the fueler blade to, to do that for you. So we, we take our eight thousandths, we slide it down in there, we've loosened it and retightened it. We put the air meter back in and maybe we're only... I don't know, seven or eight on our air meter. Well, we know we had an eight thousandths. Now we can just go grab us a nine thousandths feeler blade and, and do it again until we can get all of these synced together. Okay, so all of these throttle bodies all have a return spring except for the very last one. On the driver's side, this one's the most important and it does not have a return spring. It relies on the one in front of it. The only other thing that couples the two together is the center coupler. So the reason I mention that is usually if the coupler's got a little bit of slop, this back throttle blade can move back and forth and therefore it's going to not only change our TPS reading but also the airflow through that throttle body. So a nice little trick is to take a really, really nice sharp uh, all or center punch and you can center punch the coupler and swell it out so that way it tightens it up to where all of them are the same, all of them are basically operating at the same time so the TPS stays correct. All right, so to wrap this up, basically, at this point, we've, we've checked all this at idle. What I would suggest is now you go drive it. And the only time that you're gonna really experience anything unusual would be probably very, very light throttle. So we're just barely cruising, we've barely got our foot on the throttle. If you were to hear it, what we call lean sneeze, chances are it goes down to the bell crank in the center that's operating both throttle body banks. And so what you'll probably find if that happens, then when you come back to your garage, what you want to do is, is just basically barely crack the throttle. You can have somebody get in the car and do it for you, or if you're you know, you can get like a screwdriver in there and just barely push on it and put the air meter in there and check it from bank to bank and make sure at very, very minimal uh, part throttle that both banks are reading the same. 
If they're not, then it's going to be a small adjustment down in our belt crank linkage to get them both operating basically timed uh, from side to side. And that will take care of any kind of lean sneeze. The last little tip that I'll point out, once you're completely satisfied with your setup and you want to keep this adjustment in, obviously, make sure that everything is retightened and then take you some uh, super glue or anything that's not going to be very noticeable and a small little dab on the back of the throttle adjustment screws is going to keep it from ever backing out. So when I say you can set it and forget it, you follow the direction from start to finish and those little tips and you'll have a successful installation.